probably. Um, today we're going to talk about JavaScript and we're going to talk about, we, we don't have time with just one lecture, but again with the hurricane knocking out one day uh, and so on, um, we don't really have time to go into it in great detail, but I do want to go over and talk a little bit about, you know, first of all talk about the purpose of it. And secondly talk about, um, get into the mechanics of it a bit. And hopefully you can see what it's used for. And hopefully, just like in movies, you know, they always plant at the very end of the movie uh, something to make you want to come back and see the sequel. Hopefully this will uh, inspire you to take uh, some of the other classes uh, that, that deal more intensely with this. I want to pull up an example of a web page before we start to, and, and then I want to talk about it. I'm, all, uh, I'm always uh, I'm always concerned when I go to like to a news site. Like, what well, if something horrible is happening? <laughs> you know, and it pops up on the screen. So I came and checked uh, uh, first. A little paranoia here. All right, all right. Here we go. That's a lot of tattoos there. The neck ones are the ones that get me. How do you have that done to your neck? It's like, ooh. But. <laughs> At any rate, um, if we notice this web page, I want to show you something about it. And if you notice, here's the navigation. Here's the main navigation over here. All right. But notice that as you put your mouse over a link, the sub-navigation underneath of it changes. Underneath it changes. All right. And if you think about it, for a site like MSN, which is a, a very big website, you know, there's, there's probably hundreds or thousands of articles on it at least. Um, it kind of makes sense to take this approach because you couldn't really have links to everything on the home page, right? If you had links to everything, that would take up all the home page. So what they do instead to sort of economize on space is they have a main navigation. And as you put your mouse over the different links, a different sub-navigation appears. Same thing happens with some of these, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, content options. So you can get a specialized version uh, of it and so on. Now let's talk about this in, in regards to our client-server model that we talked about before. A couple of observations. How long does it take for the submenu to change? Get your stopwatch out. Ready? All right, I'm going to move it over. Doesn't take long at all, right? So have that observation in the back of your head as we go forward. If you remember, we have our client, which is someone running a browser. We are connected through the internet. And we request pages from a web server. All right? That's sort of a simple model of, of how web pages work. We go in and we type in a link. So we type in msn.com. That makes it through the internet, which depending on our connection speed and depending on that particular day and depending on a whole number of other factors, it might take a little while or a long while. And again, we're talking about in computer terms, not, not in, in people terms. You know, it's not like it's taking 20 minutes to get to the server, but the number of fractions of seconds it takes can be either big or small. It then gets to the server, and the server may have to think about that request for a while, might have to do some processing. Then it delivers the page back. It delivers the web page and all the associated files back to the client, and the client views those files in the browser. All right. Now, depending on how fast your connection to the internet is, so depending on this, depending on traffic on the internet in general is, and depending how busy the server is, 
that can take a relatively long amount of time. So if you're sitting there waiting for a web page to load, if you, if you click on a link and it just sits there for a while, any one of those three things could be the bottleneck. All right. Then you get the page back. Now, if you notice when you, when you mouse over these things, the changes occur instantaneously. As opposed to when I say click on one of these, even though we have a fast connection, you can still see the page blinking and refreshing. So even on a fast connection, it takes a little while for the page to load. All right. Because again, of this. It's going through the server and all that. So, when we see this sort of behavior, me putting my mouse over this, and it changes instantly, that should be a tip off that something funny is going on here, right? That this round trip isn't happening. And that's true, because what's happening instead is there's JavaScript being run. All right? Um, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is code that gets sent down as part of the web page. So, again, a web page gets sent to the client and it consists of HTML for the structure of the page and the content, CSS for the appearance of the page, and the physical layout, and finally JavaScript for behavior, or another way to say it is interactivity. I think I spelled that right. Yeah, interactivity. By interactivity, we mean the interaction between the user and the web page. So, I make an action, the page responds by behaving a little bit differently. So, I put my mouse over sports, and boom, that subnav underneath it changes. So the page is responding, it's interacting with me. I do something, it does something back. All right? And so on down the line. So that's what JavaScript brings to the uh, table. JavaScript typically is based on um, responding to users' actions and somehow changing a page that's already loaded. So through JavaScript, we can change pages that are already loaded without having to reload the whole page. All right? We learned interactivity, a very crude form of interactivity, when we first started talking about links, right? Because links are interactive in a way. I click on a link, it goes to a different page. That's interactivity. I do something, the page responds back. Yet, that's not really what we mean with JavaScript. Clicking on a link and reloading the page is sort of a clunky form of interaction. The whole page reloads when I click a link. So I click the sports headlines, and boom, it goes and it loads. As opposed to this kind of interaction, where I put my mouse over Major League Baseball, and I see a whole bunch of choices underneath that, or under NASCAR, or NBA, or... Uh, NCAA football, and so on down the line. All right? That's a different kind of interaction. That's an interaction without having to go and reload the whole page. So that's exactly the purpose of JavaScript, to, to on the fly interact with the user and make changes to the page without um, reloading the entire page. Yes? Okay, that, that's a good question. Um, the, the, the question was, is what about through CSS? Uh, for example, you could do a mouse over with CSS for a hover on a link. If you, yeah, or, or whatever. All right, there are some things that you can do strictly with CSS, but for the, the more involved sort of interactivity is where you get into JavaScript. So, yeah, keep in mind there's a lot of ways that you can do anything, you know. On some older websites, for example, they might implement that behavior using Flash. Or they might implement some behavior using CSS.
But for the, the more involved sort of interactions like this, my guess, again, I wouldn't know without looking, but my guess would be that it's done via JavaScript. Yes? Would that negatively uh, impact accessibility? It has a potential to, all right? Um, because again, you're right, they, they can't mouse, you know, there's no such thing as a mouse over. But keep in mind what you can do. You can, you know, typically with a screen reader, you will tab through the different links. And one thing to remember is that when you have JavaScript executing on a page like this, the one thing I, I didn't mention is, all this HTML gets loaded. In other words, all these menus are loaded. So you could tab through them if you were um, uh, using a screen reader. So you still could be able to access it. It might take a little longer and it wouldn't necessarily be as intuitive, but uh, again, depending on how you implement it, um, you, you know, it, it could be accessible. Yes? There's a whole lot of JavaScript on there. It's going to take a really long time for the page to load. Is there any reason why you wouldn't um, the, the, okay, the question was is if you have a lot of JavaScript, um, would it uh, cause the page to load slower? Well, that's a good question. The one thing to keep in mind, and let's see, sometimes when you view source it isn't necessarily instructive, but let's view the page source. Okay, we can actually look and see. Let's 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 find one. There's a it looks like there's some Fox Sports links here on the page. Let's go to that. Let's find that link. Oh no, that that's these links. Yeah, that's where we are there. All right, let's scroll down a little bit further and look for, all right, here is the, uh, um, where are we? Here is a link for, here's a nav global navigation, here's a link for NFL, all right. Now, there's some code here on mouse over and we'll, we'll talk about that code in a second, it's going to make this stuff appear. And we'll notice what that is. That's just plain old HTML unordered list. It's just styled in such a way. So if you notice, let, let's, let's observe some of these n link names and, and so we have a good idea. There's one that's NFL home, scores, standing, schedule. When we go to the page, we can't see that, right? All we see is a link for NFL. When we put our mouse over it, though, then we see NFL home, scores, standing, schedule, and so on. So the point is, is all the HTML gets delivered all at once. The interactivity of the JavaScript allows us to change the way the page looks on the fly. All right? Effectively what's happening is we can make things visible or invisible depending on um, if we're hovering our mouse on something or not. All right? So, to your question, all these menus get downloaded. All right? So if we looked, we could find the soccer one and we could find the NASCAR one and the Major League Baseball. In addition, JavaScript gets loaded as well. The code to actually switch between those gets loaded as well. The thing is, though, is it's plain text that gets loaded. So therefore, yeah, it makes for a bigger file. However, the real size comes in with the images and, and all that. So yeah, it adds to the size of the web page, but not a crazy amount. Let, let's go and let's actually save this page. Let's save this page as the HTML. And let's look to see how big it is. This, with all the JavaScript and all the HTML that's hidden and all that, is, is only 231 KB. So that's not that huge of a page, all right? Um, you know, that's, that's one 
good size image worth. So you, the, to answer your question, yes, anything you put on a web page adds to the length, but it doesn't necessarily add excessively to it. Um, the question you have to ask yourself is, is, is the stuff that you're adding worth the download? All right. Okay. So, let's take a closer look and see how this is done. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write like a little trivia. Uh, I, you know, humbling experience yesterday. I was I at uh, the Slow Train Cafe in Oberlin, you know, which Oberlin College, you got to have a feeling there's, a, there's at least a couple of smart people in the crowd there, right? And they were having a trivia contest. I got one half of one question right, all right, out of maybe a dozen questions that they asked. The question that I got right, or half right, is what are the two states that don't do daylight savings time? Does anyone know? The two states. Hawaii is one of them. Alaska, oddly enough, isn't. No. <laughs> Arizona. I don't know why, but Arizona and Hawaii don't do daylight savings time. I, for some reason, Arizona's stuck in my head. I, I, you know, that's one of those things that that's taken the place of something important, I'm sure. You know, that like maybe I have a doctor's appointment today, you know, but I'm not going to remember because that memory location has stuck in there that Arizona doesn't do daylight savings time. But anyhow, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a little trivia question. And, and I'm going to have it so that you can see the answer when you hover over something. All right? Now, here's the equation, and, and here's how this works. There, there's three pieces to making JavaScript, and no matter how complex it is, you still have these three pieces. It's just that sometimes the pieces are big, sometimes the pieces are small. Number one is you have user events. User events, oh, thank you. User events is what gets the ball rolling, all right? In other words, keep in mind by our description that user, uh, the, the JavaScript responds to a user's action, all right? So therefore, the idea is that Um, the idea is that first the user does something and then the page responds. So with user events, what we have to do is we have to have a way to say, hey, look for this to happen. And when this happens, do this. All right? So they typically... User events are typically the way that users interact with a web page. How, are, how is that? They put mouse, you can put your mouse on things. That's one event. You can click on things. You can press a key. You can write mouse button. All those things are, are user events that you can write code for. Now, there's some user events that don't really relate to user actions, but for the most part, user events are the things that users do when they interact with a web page. And there, that's what's going to get the ball rolling. That's the, that's the user doing something part of the interactivity. The second thing is the DOM. That sounds imposing, right? Like that's a, some kind of organized... No, that, that's Don, right? I don't know. But that's, yeah, that sounds like that would be some kind of organized crime person. But it's not. DOM stands for Document Object Model. What the DOM is, is a way to point to something on the page and say, I want to do something with this. All right? So, for example, let me go back to MS, MSN site. The user event would be on mouse over. And again, we can see that in the source, right? On mouse over. All right? So that's the user event. The DOM is a way to point to the specific thing on the page that we want to show and then show it. So, here's the 
there's a chunk of HTML starting here, I believe, that we want to show, right? The submenu for the NFL. We need a way to point to that and say, this is a submenu we want to show, not this, or that, or that. All right? So when I put my mouse over NFL, I get the NFL submenu. I don't get the soccer submenu. When I put my mouse over NBA, I get the NBA submenu and not the NFL submenu. So there has to be a way for me to point to something on the page, point to a chunk of HTML and say, this is what I want to do something with. All right? And we can do a lot of things with it. In this case, we're making it visible. All right? The final ingredient is the JavaScript language itself. And JavaScript is truly a programming language. You know, HTML is sort of describing a document, defining a document. JavaScript is truly a programming language with loops and if statements and variables and all that sort of thing. And it's very flexible and it's very powerful. So, Here's what I'm going to do. Let me describe what I'm going to do. I'm going to create uh, a little trivia uh, game that's going to look like this. It's going to have the question, what are the two U.S. states? Blah, 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 blah. And then, I'm not going to show the answer at first, right? Because what fun would that be? Everyone would be like, oh yeah, I knew that, you know. What I'm going to have instead is I'm going to have some text that says, show answer. Actually, I'm going to make it a button. All right. I mean, we could do this a bunch of different ways, and we might, might play around with that depending on the time. I think the easiest way to handle this is to make it a button now. And then, or actually I'm going to make it a link. And then when the user puts their mouse over this, I'm going to show the answer underneath it. All right. So that's the ingredients. That's our little design. So let me go and let me create a web page. I'll start with one of them that we already had. All right. Let me get rid of all this. Get rid of all this. And I'm going to put in here a div. And it's going to be the question. What are the two U.S. states that do not have daylight savings time. So I'll put that on the page. I'll make my link. This is really sort of a dummy link. So I'm just going to send it to the top of the page if someone happens to click on it. No, no big deal. And that's what pound sign represents. Show answer. All right. Then I'm going to have a div for the answer. Now, We're not there yet, right? Because if we view this page, pardon me, you'll see it all, right? All 
right? And sure enough, we do. All right? How can we make it so that we don't see the answer? You might not know the answer to this question, but I would hope you'd have an idea, maybe not what we're going to do, but where we're going to put the change. In other words, is this an HTML change or is this a CSS change to make the answer invisible? CSS. All right, yeah. Remember that, um, that, um, what do I want to say? That anything that deals with the appearance belongs in CSS. So whether something is invisible or not, that's an aspect of its appearance, so it belongs in CSS. So again, every, each one of these three languages has its own role. The content, well, what's the content of this? The question and the answer and the mechanism to show that, to, to show the answer. That's in HTML. So boom, I have these three links. The ability to hide a portion of it or change the appearance of it. Maybe I want to format the question a certain way or uh, uh, initially I want to uh, hide the answer. That's going to be done in CSS. So I'm going to say ID equals answer. And I'm going to do... Answer, display hidden. All right. So, that's what we have. And now, if we look at this page, oops, we see no difference at all. Style. What are the US? Did I save this? ID equals answer. How we find answer display hidden. Let's do this. Oh, visibility hidden. Visibility. Almost. Visibility hidden. There we go. There is a display attribute, but it has different values. There we go. And now it's not showing. Okay, so we did the one part. Now, we put our mouse over there, still it doesn't show. All right, this is what JavaScript brings to the party. The ability to, on the fly, to dynamically go and say, all right, when I put my mouse over that, I now want to show this. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we first need the DOM. All right, and the DOM will allow us to point to what on the page we want to change. Oh, I'm sorry. We first need the user event. All right, the the user event is going to identify and say, "Hey, when the user does something, we want to respond in some way." All right. So, what do we want to do? When the user puts their mouse over that, we want to show the answer. So, what element has the user event associated with it? The link. All right. Remember, when you're identifying where you're going to put the event, it's not the thing that you want to change, it's the thing that the user is going to interact with. In other words, I'm going to put the on mouse over event here. And not on the answer. Now I want the answer to show, that's right, but the answer isn't what the user is going to be putting their mouse over. The show answer link is what the user is going to be actually putting their mouse on. So that's where the on mouse over event goes. Now what are the events? Again, we can go and we can get a list of them if we want. A lot of them are pretty common sense. You could probably guess them. Here's a, looking for a nice, 
I like to see a list of them. That that is a good example, but I like yeah. Let's see. Yeah, here's a better list. On click, on double click, on mouse down, on mouse move, on mouse over, on mouse out, on mouse up. So again, you can actually do one thing when the user presses down a mouse and another thing when the user lifts it up. Same thing with keys. All right. And then so on down the line. When they press a key. You can do something when the user presses the key down. You can do something different when the key is released. All right. In the interest of time, we're just going to probably go over one or two of these events. And the first one we're going to do is on mouse over. So I'm going to say on mouse over, I want to do something. Now what is it that I want to do? Well, in plain talk, I want to go and I want to make this visible. All right. That's in plain English talk. That's the goal I want to do. Let's speak in terms of HTML and CSS. What would I want to change about this page? I want to change that answer div not to have a visibility of hidden, but to have a visibility of visible. Right? Your two choices for, or two of your choices for visibility are hidden and visible. So, my CSS defined this div as having a visibility of hidden. If I put my mouse over that link, I want to change the visibility to visible. So, Put another way, what I would want to do is I would want to go and change this div to have a style where the visibility is hidden. All right. Now we just need a way to use the DOM to do that and we need a way to write the JavaScript code to do that. Now, one of the key things that you use in the DOM is a function that allows you to point to something on the page using its ID. All right. Remember when we first introduced IDs, I talked about how IDs need to be unique, right? For styling purposes and for JavaScript purposes, you need to be able to point to some one specific thing on the page and say, this is what I want to change. So, there's a statement in JavaScript using the DOM that looks like this. Document dot get element by ID and then in parentheses you put the ID. One thing about JavaScript is that it's case sensitive so you can't type in document with a capital D and expect it to work. It only knows the document as document. Typically with these with these with these uh, um, items in the DOM, the first word is lowercase, each subsequent word is uppercase. So if you notice, that's a good guide by document, lowercase g, get, element, uppercase e, by, uppercase b, id, uppercase i. What that does is that points to something on the page. This is the thing I want to change. I want to show this answer, not any other answer. I don't want to change the color of the link. I don't want to change the background color. I don't want to hide the question. All right. All these things are things that I want to do, but I want to do it to that particular thing. And in our case, our ID is called answer. So it'll look like this. I'm going to write a little bit smaller because I have a little bit more to write. Document get element by ID, and we're going to say answer. Then I have to say what I want to change about that. That's only pointing to it. I could do a lot of things with it. I could make the font gigantic. All right. I could make change the color of it. I could do any number of different things. But that's not what I want to do in this case. What do I want to do? I want to make that text visible. So. I will say, what do I want to change about it? I want to change its style. All right. I don't want to change the HTML, which I could do. All right. I want to change the style. What about the style I want to change? I want to change the visibility. And then I'll go down to the next line. 
What do I want to set the visibility to? Visible. So, let's go and let's put this in the code. Document that get element by ID parentheses answer. I want to change that guy's style. What do I want to change about the style? I want to change the visibility. What do I want to set the visibility to? I want to set it to visible. I use a single quote, not the double quote, because I use a double quote to surround my whole JavaScript instruction. You have two kinds of quotes. You could use them either way, right? But you can't use double quotes for both things. Otherwise, it'll really confuse it. I can change any HTML attribute or any CSS attribute by doing this. I could change, for example, the source of an image. If answer, let's say, was an image instead of text, I could say answer.src and change the src attribute of that image. Here I'm changing the style, so I say style visibility. But I could really change anything about it, either the content, which means changing the HTML, or the appearance, that is changing the CSS, by just putting in, in the case of style, the word style, then the style attribute. Now notice it's not a coincidence that this is the same as this. I'm accessing the same properties. I'm just doing it via code. All right. In other words, I went and I gave some initial values to those properties of that element using the style sheet. But then through my code I can point to that element and change those properties. So now we have Initially, it is visible. Put our mouse over it, and it appears. Take our mouse out, and it goes away. It, it does not go away. We might want it to go away, is what I was going to say. All right. So how do you suppose we're going to make it go away when we take our mouse out? All right. Pretty much the same way. All right. We need to know the user event, all right, that we're going to use. We need to know the, how to refer to that element, and we need to know the JavaScript instruction. Well, these two are pretty easy. We're going to do the same thing we did here, except instead of visibility visible, we're going to say visibility hidden. So all we really have to know is know what the... Um, user event is. And the user event for taking your mouse off of something is on mouse out. So I can go here and I can say on mouse over on mouse out and set it back to hidden, back to that. Generally, it's the same name here as it is up here. The only difference is, is if there's dash in the style name, you eliminate the dashes and just capitalize each subsequent word. So like background color in CSS is background dash color. In JavaScript, you'd say background color where the B would be lowercase and the C would be uppercase. So now we have this going on. Put our mouse on and that causes the first snippet of JavaScript to execute. That is we point to the thing on the page that has an ID of answer. We um, access its style visibility property and we change it to visible. Take our mouse off 
and we change it, change it to invisible. Now, to be sure, the MSN example is, in some respects, a hundred times more complicated than this. There's a lot more going on. Or, uh, yeah, did I say MSN or ESPN? MSN. But basically, this is the same thing that they're doing. All right? They have some HTML. In their case, the HTML is a set of submenus. And those submenus get changed based on, um, based on, um, which, which uh, main item on the navigation the user has their mouse hovered on. And they show and they hide those things, just as we're showing and hiding these things here. So this example could be fairly easily adapted to, do, to being one of those drop-down menu examples, because it's really doing the same thing. Yes? Does it matter if it's on an external CSS? No. No. Uh, the question was, does it matter if it's in an external CSS and it doesn't? I just put everything in the same file just because it, I think it, sometimes it's easier to lecture that way. Yes? So, does the DOM have access to the first of CSS properties or only one or specifically type um, That's a good question. I believe the DOM would have um, um, access to every property. In other words, even if I didn't define, say, an invisib uh, a visibility property for it. I could still access the visibility property. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now I can change HTML this way. For example, uh, a, a common thing to do is to have um, thumbnails where you click on a thumbnail and the bigger picture appears. What you do is you do something like this. You'd say, you'd have your image. Let's say, it's thumb1.jpg. You then have your main image, I don't know, that gets loaded initially with some value in it. And then, when they click on thumbnail 2, we want to swap out that image and display image 2. So you could have, for every image, you could have a thumb version of it and a full version of it. And when the user clicks on this image, we could then change this guy, and I'll give it an ID of big image. So to do a thumbnail, I could do on click equals same sort of thing, document dot get element by ID big image src equals 2.jpg something like that. What am I doing? I'm referencing this source property of the thing that has an ID of big image. And I'm changing it from whatever it is now to 2.jpg. So if we're changing a style property, we say style.visibility, style.color, style.whatever. If we're changing an HTML property, we just say document get element by ID dot and then the name of the property. So in this case, we're changing the SRC property. We could change, do all kinds of crazy things and have a lot of fun. We could change the position of a link if the user puts their mouse over it. So you make it so they can't click on it. All right, that's always, it's always like one of the first things the wise guys in the class do, is they put a button on the page and then they move the button around as the user tries to click it. All right, we could do that though. We could change the color. 
We could change the CSS that gets applied to the page. Now, that's a good one, right? You know, that way, right? You could give preferences to people. You know, do you want to see this black and white or yellow and blue or different color combinations that might be easier for them to read? All right. So the whole idea is is that using the DOM and using the JavaScript and using the uh, user events, you can capture actions of the users and then change the page virtually any way you want to. You can actually add new content to the page. You can make things sh show up, disappear, and change content. So, again, JavaScript examples will get a lot more complicated than, th than these that I went over in class. But the recipe is always the same, or, or typically the same. A user event, the DOM points to something on the page, and then we use JavaScript to do something with that, to change properties or to access the properties or whatever, and, uh, and do what we need to do. Any questions about this? You're welcome to try to put JavaScript in, you know, in your project or in any of the assignments if you just want to play around with it. You're also welcome to sign up for CISS 232 and even mobile web development, all right, which takes the techniques that we've uh, talked about in this class and really expands them to work uh, better in a mobile mode. Are there any questions at this point? All right, this has been a great class. This web development class is always one of my favorite ones to teach. You can watch the videos of my other classes to see if I say that in every class. All right? But I always enjoy teaching this class. All right? uh, let me know if you have any questions. And we're going to head up the lab now. Uh, remember, your project is due next week. Uh, if you have any questions between now and then, please let me know. Be sure to read the announcements in Angel.